carried out a full flying program in our operating area some 60 miles to the east of Malta. Senior pilot of 892 had an eventful evening when he found himself low on airspeed at the end of the catapult during night flying last night. By swiftly jettisoning all his external stores, he was able to regain control of his aircraft and continued round but bolted on his first recovery. The crash and smash team noticed the smell of burning rubber and it was subsequently discovered that his starboard tire had burst. Due to the vigilance of the crash and smash teams, the correct actions were therefore taken and the aircraft was safely recovered at the second attempt. Hands to four flying stations. It's clear the decks for flying. Aerials down well out of everyone's way and the port watch flight deck crew leave the ready room to muster on deck. Two flight deck officers, FDOs, a captain of the flight deck, two POs, six leading airmen, and 28 naval airmen. Straight into the DIs, the daily inspections, the pre-flying deck checks, emergency barrier arm raising. Jumbo, the big lift crane, can pick up a 20-ton aircraft like a baby. The fire suit men check that the fire lockers in the catwalk have the right amount of foam drums, that the water pressures are okay. A right old round trot when it's a 950 foot long deck. There are 27 fire points. Crack each hydrant to check the water flow. Top up tractor batteries, oil levels, fuel, hydraulic fluid, and critical for pilot safety, the deck landing projector site, DLPS. Different height or glide path settings for each aircraft type related to the pilot's height in the cockpit on the approach. The LSO, the landing safety officer, brings the sight right down and checks the side-to-side -side sighting to make sure the pilots will have an accurate centerline approach to the angle deck. Then out front to check that the lights are working from the pilot's point of view. High or low. Communications checks. ACR loop check over. Flight deck to ACR, the aircraft control room. Deck flight deck to FICO, over. where the bosses are. When the flying starts, it'll be instant flight decisions. Flight no time then for smoke signals. Last check, a maxi FOD blood. A line of handlers and squadron personnel walking forward to aft, picking up bits of wire, paint, wood, combs, general gash that aircraft engines can't digest. FOD? Foreign object damage. Throw it from the round down aft to the fishes astern, where it's harmless. Checks must be reported complete to ACR by first launch minus 30 minutes. ACR inform Flyco. The maintainers release a buccaneer for ranging, up to flight deck level on the forward lift where the flight deck crew await it with a tractor and towing arm. They'll push it to its spot, the position pre-arranged for it by ACR, all carefully worked out depending on the launch composition. For instance, certain weapons could be set off by ship's radar, the RAD has problem. You certainly don't want an aircraft so armed pointing straight at the island. Last minute rectification. More aircraft being spotted. This 809 Squadron Buccaneer into Fly 2, the parking position beside the island. Three Phantoms, Black Leader 2 and 3 on Channel 1 for Lepus on Sirius, followed by CCAs. Both three codes, as shown on the board, with an opening vector as required when airborne. The Gallic controller, 041, again on channel one. Both three code 1370 for Lepus control. While the air crew briefings go on inside the island, outside, more busy manoeuvring. 809 line office, greenies, armourers, 892 phantoms, airframe, radios, ejector seat serviceable, snag on a radar, serviceable, unserviceable, it all goes into the aircraft 700 book. Right, 20 degree MDSL, Mike, for us, 1,000 pounding, entry conditions and release conditions as always, 4,500 feet, 370 knots for the entry, releasing 2150 feet and speed 450. More checks, more signatures. ACR, where the spotting is organised. Buccaneer hydraulics problem, won't be flying. So change the parking on deck again and tell FICO. Oil change complete. Micro switch unserviceable. Signature, serviceable, unserviceable, serviceable. So, as you're approaching 30 miles, I should be 20, 25 miles ahead of you, coming up to the target. Bombing up. Signatures, more signatures. The last one as the pilot signs the 700. It's all in his hands now. 
the search and rescue helo, SAR. The SAR will be on station with its winchman and diver in case of any launch mishap for the aircrew. Engage rotors. The crews walk aft to where the aircraft are ranged and ready. The buccaneers on the starboard side. The Phantom's port side in parking area fly four. After the external checks, a good look over the bang seat before jumping in. Launch the SAR. Stand by to start. The Buccaneers stand us again. Stand clear of propellers. Intake the signal. Straps tight. Anti-G working. Helmets on. Radio leads connected. Start up. In ACR, finger on the pulse. Watch for any unserviceabilities that might alter the launch order. After start checks, flaps, tail slab, ailerons, oil pressures, jet pipe temperatures, hundreds of them. Permission to taxi. Gannett, first launch on the waste catapult. First, because it needs less steam pressure for launching, a matter of economy. First buccaneer taxis out behind for the bow catapult. The range director then marshals a phantom out to go after the gannet on the waste cat. Thousands of pounds of fuel burning away behind, so it's got to be a slick operation. Second engine winds up. Chalk men hang on for dear life during power checks. Fire suit men stand by. The crew's clear. FDO winding up to take off power. Full power. Green from Trico. Go into the seat and away. The buck moves up to the bow cat, while behind, the base loading director marshals the next phantom on. Bow cat, the JBDs, jet blast deflectors, come up and lock behind the buccaneer. They're great big water-cooled plates held up by powerful hydraulic jacks. Above, the SAR gives the buck a last second look over. The whole back is secured behind, an AEO checks the tail incidence, and the badger runs out. Up front, it's down parking chocks. The bridle's hooked up to the aircraft. Nose wheel in the air. Tension. All good. Thumbs up. Clear from underneath. Straighten the nose wheel. Thumbs up to the FDO. The damp box lights. Flyco lights. Green. Go. Another one ready behind it. Aft the waste cat. The phantom's on. Hold back secured. Hook up the bridle. Tension. Nylon bridle arrestor stops tight. Crew's clear. After banners. Everything straining. Pilot happy. Go! Comes back for the next launch. Already another phantom lining up. Bowcat, Buccaneer. Wastecat, Phantom. Blast back. Bowcat, Buccaneer, quarter ton of steam a time. Last one, first launch. Fire suit man, relax a while. Another serviceable phantom emerges from the hangar depths. ACR have planned its spot position. And the tractor crew meet it at flight deck level for ranging. While another team maneuver a Sea King to fly three, starboard side behind the radar dome. Sea King autopilot up the spout, so onto the aft lift. Operator checks all clear, blows his whistle twice as a warning, selects the level, the aft hangar, and is down to see the maintainer. Electrics, oxygen, instruments, tire pressures, all to be signed for and checked complete by the pilots. Spotted, chocks in, lashing secure. Signatures all there. Grab your helmet and away again. Range light to amber. Clear to taxi and load the cats. The range director marshals the first aircraft out, a Phantom. 
he hands over to the aft Y director, who in turn hands on to the base loading director on the waste cap. Back comes the shuttle for loading. ACR keep their board right up to date. The eternal chess game. Up go the JBDs, safe for the range crews behind them during launch, unless the hydraulic jacks fail. Then, well, reheat. It'd be over the back end, wouldn't it? Flyco Green, 20 tons, 0 to 120 knots, 3 seconds. Aircraft blast back, plus a 20 knot headwind, plus 25 knot ship speed, good for a healthy complexion. Back goes the bridle to be laced round the shuttle and connected to the aircraft for the next waste cat launch. First though, Bowcat, Buccaneer. Number one badger's thumbs up to the FDO, Waste Cat Phantom. Bowcat, Buccaneer. Waste Cat, Duck Down. Wind Blast, you get used to it, but you must never get complacent. The flight deck of a carrier is one of the most dangerous places in the world. Before the aircraft come back again, let's look at the layout. The angled flight deck was originally a British idea. Aft is the round down and the red threshold the beginning of the angle. There's Fly 4 Park port side aft and the aft lift edged in white. The angle centre line, a prominent interrupted day glow red, and the four arrestor wires stretched across the deck. Going on, helo spot 5, helo spot 4. The thick white line either side of the angle is called the baseline. There the jet blast deflectors, JBDs, flatten flush with the deck after the waste cat. And fly to park beside the island. Helo spot three and the forward lift. Note along the edge of the angle now, thinner white lines outside the baseline called wingtip safety lines. During recoveries you stay outside them in fear of your life. Then the bow catapult steaming away with its JBDs behind. Spots two and one, the white parking chocks edging fly one, the forward parking area the aircraft will go to after recovery. And finally, the cow catcher forward on which the bridle is arrested after each bow launch. Recovery stations, recovery stations. Fire suit men, tractors, handlers, Everyone behind the wingtip safety lines. Final one, two and a half miles. The LSO talks him down a four degree glide path. Drifting slightly left. Roger. Roger. On the glide path, in the groove. The four wires correctly set, bow springs raised, target wire three. The hook men run out, breaks off, the tension pulls the aircraft back, the front man signals forward to the wires director, taxi. The aft man indicates wires reset. The wire is reset, bow spring raised three inches. Phantom, hook, wheels and flaps down. Second wire. Grandstand view at the DLPS. Back comes the wire scratching over the deck. The FDEO, flight deck engineering officer, checks it for physical damage. Okay, each wire should be good for 30 recoveries anyway. Buccaneer, hook man out, go astern, wire release, up hook, up flaps, wings fold, wires reset and taxi followed to park in fly one. High and fast, wire four, two feet too high at touchdown. Phantom, go astern, wire release, up hook, up flaps, wings fold, wires reset. under the wires director's control into fly one. The flight deck we spot in the ACR window. Brakes in with the chocks. Lashings shut down the engines. Switches off. Canopies open. Ejector seat safety pins in and fresh sea air again. Plus 40 knots of it. Deep breath before the next recovery. Second wave join and turn downwind. FDO gives FICO the green. And 
Nelson Poulin sprays backwards from the wild sheep. Roger to six. Playing slightly low. No and fast. Wave off. Overshoot. Watch him carefully this time. Still a bit high. Wire three. Hookmen rush out. Go a stern. Wires release. Wires director gives the up flaps. Wings fold. Wires reset. Down safely, but only just a few seconds ahead of the unexpected. The emergency crash crew leap out after a footloose oil drum and manhandle it into the catwalk. That was genuinely nasty. And last, the gannet, which has more fuel to loiter with than the heavies. A nice, gentlemanly, 90-knot approach. Recovery complete, sir. All safe, back comes the SAR, and the captain turns the ship off the flying course and out of wind. 809 Squadron lose a buccaneer, which goes down for an engine change. Respotting starts immediately. Oil, liquid oxygen, fuel to be replenished, systems to be checked again and signed for. Weapons. Thousand pound practice bombs, blue. Leapers, smoke flares, white. Cluster of live bombs, green and yellow. Build up to the next launch. The bridle is threaded round the shuttle. Flag down and another shudder to the ship. Phantom on. Go. Check ears and beard. Bridle throw away after 50 launches into the sea. Phantom and bridal arrest on the cow catcher. Buccaneer, bow cat. Back comes the shuttle again. Next launch, rotary. Two Sea Kings on an anti submarine exercise. And both are airborne. What do the flyboys get up to after launch? With the controllers and ADR, the airborne direction room. Fleet defense. High level combat. Sidewinder missiles. Pairs low level interception. Roger. Can I use that bridge? There's my kid. Things on into it. Low level recce over Sicily. Tanking to extend the range of a sortie. Coast out. Anti shipping strike. Get right down below radar. And last target, Mother herself.
Library, tell ACR to range two fathoms at alert five. Then throttled back, joining upwind. Change of watch. And emergency. it's an emergency. emergency. Stand by, watch on deck. Rig the Mark 10 barrier. Rig the Mark 10 barrier. The buccaneer returning from a long range diversion has got its hook stuck up for real. So drop everything and rush to open the barrier pack stowages, port and starboard. The tractor pulls out the barrier and drags it across the deck to between the barrier arms. Then the forklifts position the energy absorbing packs. Then it secures them to the spigots on deck. The FDO indicates raise the barrier arms. Up she comes for height adjustment. Then get out of the way. But fickle aircraft, hook down now. Emergency over, unrig the barrier. Should be okay, but... Boater, Mr. Wires, round again, adrenaline pumping. Try again. 15 slightly low. Dropping slightly low now. A little power. Roger, and hold that action. Okay, we've got it. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Crash on deck, crash on deck. Bucket area car, undercarriage command. He mucked us about with the barrier, his turn to suffer now. Chocks, cut engines. Then forklift out with the fire suit men, fire hoses, jettison canopy if necessary in a real emergency, make the seats safe and get the air crew out as soon as possible. Then away with them down the forward lift to the sick bay. In fact, today, only to normal debriefing. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and debrief the bombing then. 20 MDS cells, here's the splash. Uh, leader will take your bombs first. Okay, if you can give me the bombs that we got. Uh, 45 at 12. Okay, first bomb, uh, 45 feet, 12 o'clock. Second bomb? 90. The med isn't always nice. A sudden squally cloudburst. But Atlantic gales, rain dripping from your nose, oil and water slippery decks, it takes a lot to stop the flying. Poor old deck. Yeah. Well, it was fine, sir. Adrian gave me a very early pickup. It took me wide astern. We motored in gently around the back into about 500 yards. Change of watch. Duskers and rollers with hooks up. They'll go on thundering through the night. And all the time, slick teamwork on a dangerous, dark, noisy deck. Roger and hold that attitude. 